43 and 26. I want to be honest with you today. Oh, did I tell you I was a millionaire? <laughs> I didn't tell you that, did I? <laughs> Praise God. I didn't, did I tell you that in three months' time, we're going to go from 32 members to 100. And in three months' time, my anointing is going to be so great that I'm going to, my anointing, you know, the Bible says your gift will make room for you. And my gift will make room for me so to the point that I'll be able to tell my wife, okay, honey, it's time for you to stop working now. All right. Stay at home and pray. <laughs> and we're going to let the gift make room for us. Amen. Amen. And also in three months time, we're going to have to have a double service. All right. We have an 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock. Right. Amen. 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 Let me see what the word says. <clears throat> 43 and 26. Put me in remembrance. <clears throat> Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Let me tell you something. You will never get rich. You will never really get delivered. You will never walk in complete health until you learn how to put God in remembrance of his word. Until you learn how to do what? Put in remembrance and plead together with him and declare thou. In other words, talk to him. And talk to the elements. Yes. Talk to those angels that are assigned to your life yes. and tell them, talk to that sickness that's in your life and tell that sickness in the name of Jesus, I don't accept this because I am the ruler over this earth. Yes. And because I have rule over this earth, I do not have to accept sickness. And I don't accept it and I command it to go. And the more you confess it and the more you speak against it, that sickness will begin to reduce. The more you speak to that poverty, it will begin to go. Daniel had to talk 21 days one time. But that deal, that situation that he was dealing with, at the end of 21 days, he talked so hard the angel come and talk to him. Sometimes your blessing is hoovering over you, but the devil be trying to hinder your blessing to make your faith get out of line. When you make your faith get out of line, your blessing will go back. But if you hold to your confession, we've already let our faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word. So now, when you get weak in an area, or you're trying to receive in an area, if you begin to speak it, and speak it, and speak it, then faith will come. And when faith comes, results. We were made in his image, is that right? And what did he say? What well, I'm going too fast. Let's go to Matthew 12. Matthew 12. I've been teaching you, and Pastor Irvin came and taught you, how important our words are. We have, we have got to know, and I want you to know, and finally get the message, that whatever you're going through in your life, don't rehearse the situation. Tell me the answer. Amen. Tell your friends the answer. That's right. Don't tell them, I got this child, and nobody helped me. Right. You said you're going to help me. Now why you going to help me? I can't do this and I can't do that. Don't say that. Say, I got this child and I'm being blessed. God is blessing me. All my needs are met according to his riches and glory. I don't want for nothing. He's moving by his spirit. All of my needs are met according to his riches and glory. He promised me. He said, God, you told me. Let me tell you something, what you said in your word. You told me to put you in remembrance. And you told me that you never seen the righteous for Satan. Neither has seen begging and bread. You said that you was young and now you are old. That's what David said, God. And if you did it for David, you've got to do it for me. If you heal the blind man that cried out to your old son of David, have mercy on me. If you heal him, you got to heal me. Not only do you have to, but healing is already available, and because it's already available, I am healed. Let's look at 12 and 36. Matthew 12 and 36. But I tell you, am I in 12? No, I'm not in 12. <coughs> but I say unto you, that every idle word that a man shall speak, <coughs> they shall give account of thereof in the day of judgment. Let me read it in the let me read it in the Amplified. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, men will have to give an account of every idle inoperative. 
inoperative. So the words you speak should operate for you. Let me tell you why they need to operate for you. Because you were made in the image of God. You are his children. And when he, he doesn't sit up around and crack old stale dirty jokes that don't profit nothing. Every time he say something, it come to pass. Yes, yes. That's why you can't sit around and afford to say negative stuff. Because whatever you say, because you are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, it'll come to pass. Let's say, for instance, if you were a king, and you said, you were just teasing, and you said, shoot him with an arrow. And before you could say, I was just joking, they shot him. Because everything you say come to pass. But this your boy. And because you just sitting around joking, saying, shoot him with an arrow, they shot him, now your, your pal is dead. So you cannot afford to just shoot out old vain, inoperative words. Amen. You've got to learn to let your speech be seasoned. That's it. Let me finish reading. <clears throat> inoperative, non-working word they speak. Inoperative, non-working. Everything you say need to work for you. That's right. Thank you. Everything you say need to work for you. Okay, we already know you got a shortage in your pocketbook. So why rehearse that? If you say that, you're going to continue to walk in shortage. Because whatsoever thing you say, I promise it come to pass. How do you think that people wind up doing the job they currently do? Because somewhere down the line, even in their childhood or growing up, they said, well, I'm going to just go over here and get me a job over here. That's the catfish plant. That's all they thought. So that's what they went and did. Or some said, well, I think I want to be a doctor. Yeah. And they said that and said that and said that until they got in them. Then when they got in them, faith broke out. And when faith broke out, they came to a conclusion. Yeah. Verse 37. <laughs> For by thy words shalt thou be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. So now we've learned, we've already learned, that a man's heart is evil in all things. Every imagination he got is messed up. Everything you think about is flesh nature. So now we know we can't think on with our words. We can't put our words in our heart. That's why faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So you've got to put the word in your heart. Let the word come out of your mouth and confession is made unto your conclusion. I hope you get that. If you want to be healed, you got to speak healing to yourself. Amen. You could be at, 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 the, at the job. See, you know, I, I'm just healed. I thank you, God, because I'm healed. I thank you, God, because I got money. I thank you, God, because I got a brand new car. Praise God for my new car. I think there's a blessing of the Lord making rich and out of no sorrow. And the people will say you're crazy, but when you go outside, you'll be riding in your new car. <laughs> the people will say you're crazy, but when they got a doctor bill, you don't have one. Amen. The people will say you're crazy. They paid a house, note, your house paid off Amen. way before time. Because you spoke it into existence. Thank you. Let's look at Matthew 16 and uh, 18. I want you to see this. This is awesome. When I really looked at this, the Word of God said, Am I in 16 and 18? Matthew 16 and 18. <clears throat>